Hello everyone, welcome to Tangle with Tracy Ann. I have a lot going on over the next few weeks, but I will be posting videos whenever I can. Today I'll be creating a bouquet of tangles using original Zentangle tangles. I'll be drawing on tan mixed media paper, and this is 6 inch by 8 inch. And I've drawn a border using the width of my ruler, which is about an inch. I'll be using a white gel pen and I've chosen to use a 10, size 10, a brown Micron 01, a gold gel pen, a pencil and a white charcoal pencil and of course a couple of tortillons to go with that and a thicker pen, I've used this Uniball eye pen for colouring. So I'll start with my white gel pen and this is the tangle aquafleur so the first thing i do is create this splat sort of a pattern bit of bit of a flowery pattern and then i'm going to create some striping but as i do this i'm creating a little bit of a hook so it looks like these stripes are wrapping around the flower In the next section I'm not going to start from that bottom point, I'll start halfway up and create more stripes from this new point. Thank you. 
I'm going to change direction again for this last little section and this time I'm coming from the last stripe that I created. So there's your basic aquafleur and you can add embellishments. So I'm using my brown Micron 01 pen to draw some little orbs in those gaps. Now I'll reinforce those stripes by putting a brown outline. Using my jelly roll again, I'm going to draw some toodles. Switching back to my brown Micron 01, I'm going to draw the tangle Icanthus, which starts with a stem, then I'm drawing some little branches coming off that centre stem. Once you've got those in, draw a little kind of a leaf shape at the top, but it doesn't actually touch the branch, it's just like a little peak on the top of each one of them. And once I've got right around and drawn all of these little peaks, I'm going to add some little C shapes just sort of on each side of the caps. These form a little bit of a connector for the leaves. So I'm going to connect those to the peak and then add some little curvy lines to join them up and finish off that pattern. To finish off this pattern, I'm adding a little bit of weight in between the sections of the leaf, just by drawing a little V shape and colouring it.
In the top right hand corner, I'm going to add the pattern vertigo. First of all, I'll continue that icanthus and make it look like I've got some stems and even add some going right through to form my vertigo. So it starts with a center stem. Don't be intimidated by this tangle. Some people are. So what we're going to do is start with little branches and you can see they curve outward pointing down. And I find that if you do this in tiers, it works out a lot easier. So we've got our first tier in. Now we're going to come back. We're still going in the same direction, but putting a slightly more bend on each of these little branches. So it starts above the branch be below it and then crosses behind and do the same on the other side. So that's the second tier. And if you break it up like this and do this pattern methodically, it's less intimidating. All right, for the next tier, I'm going to mimic the first tier. So you can see that these branches almost are parallel to the first ones. But of course, we've got the other branches in the way now. So whenever we hit a branch, we draw it as if it's sitting behind. And one last one. So there's the third tier. Now we're going to mimic that second tier again. So these have a little bit more bend and they're going just behind that, um, that second tier. And again, whenever you hit a branch, you draw it as if it's sitting behind. So come back the same way on the other side. It looks complicated because of all this drawing behind, but I find just do it one tier at a time and then you don't get lost in all this drawing behind. Once you've finished that whole thing, if you find any parts that look like they're a bit gappy, like there, you can just add another branch. And there you have it. I'll add a couple more little ones at the top so it has a better shape and there's vertigo. Keeping my brown Micron 01 I'm going to add a few more branches to this bottom section and now I'm coming into drawing the tangle sprinkle. Now that I've added a few more stems, I'm going to change to my gold gel pen and tie them up with a bit of a ribbon. So go around and create a little bit of a tie at the top of these stems. And then from there, I'm going to add the end of the ribbon, just a curvy line. Uh, and I've got a little bit there that I didn't want, but I can fix that up later. So now that I've got that curvy line in, I'm just thickening it up in sections. So it looks like it's waving and uh, curling. Once I've colored that in, I'm going to add another 
line and this is where I can join it to that little bit that I didn't want before. Um, thickening it up again and colouring in. Once I've got one side done I might add some strands on the other side of the bouquet as well. I'm now going to colour the whole background within the border in black. That's why I've chosen this Uniball eye pen. It comes out nice and fast, so it's great for colouring. You could use another pen that's um, a little bit thicker. A Microno one would be suitable. It would look very scratchy too. This pen is very wet, so it takes a while to dry. And you have to be careful not to put your hand in it or you'll smudge your drawing. Take your time to do this and just enjoy the process. I'm going to fill these leaves of the toodles with a white charcoal pencil so I don't want this pencil line showing through. I'm just going around and erasing all the lines that I don't want. My black pen is still quite wet so I have to be very careful when I'm brushing off the crumbs from the eraser so that I don't smudge the black lines. There's nothing worse than spending all that time colouring that in to have it smudge. Now that the main patterns have been drawn, I'm going to come in and do some shading. If you find it's a little bit too black, you can always get your eraser and clean it up a little bit to retain some of those highlights. And then I'm going to take my white charcoal pencil and add a few highlights to those orbs.
you can keep adding layers of graphite and white charcoal pencil until you get the smoothness that you want to achieve and you can see here I'm adding extra graphite underneath each leaf so that it looks like they are overlapping There's a lot of white charcoal pencil here and it does smudge easily but it's easily fixed by erasing it. Once I've got the amount of white charcoal pencil on here that I want and I've cleaned it up I'm going to spray it with some uh, fixative. That way I can keep working on my project without the white smudging everything that I do.
It always helps to go back in and neaten up your lines. If you take this extra effort, it just makes your finished piece look a lot better. I've just given my piece a bit of a spray with this fixative and once it's completely dry you can go back and keep working on your project. I want the center flower, the aquafleur, to stand out from the leaves so I'm adding extra graphite so that the leaves look like they're sitting behind the aquafleur. Now I'll brighten up the edges of that aquafleur with my white gel pen. I found this other brown, it's not actually a micron, uh, but I think they do make a darker brown in micron. And I want to darken just inside those crevices on the aquafleur. I'll add a spray of little dots here and there, almost looking like baby's breath in a bouquet. I went around the border with white and now I'm doing a gold line and then after that I think I'll do another line in black just around the edge. Thank you for watching and if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel do that so that you don't miss out on future videos. Until next week stay safe and bye for now. If you'd like to see more of my videos head over to my YouTube channel or there are a couple of links here on the screen and there's the subscribe button.